What is going on everybody? It's your boy Saint G back at it with another video. Uh, today we're going to watch some tape. We're going to talk about the Raiders versus Broncos. We're going to really talk about some of the things that I watched on tape and why I think this Raiders team yesterday against the Broncos really showed up and they really played well. Uh, the coach was top tier. The quarterback was top tier. The receiver Devontae Adams was top tier. The O-line held up. The running back did his thing. Generally speaking, this was a really good win, and I think this right here kind of shows us what this team can become. Today, we're going to talk about it. We're going to get right into this video. We're going to talk about Derek Carr specifically to start the video. And we'll go down the list, and we'll kind of end this video with Trayvon Merrick on the defensive side. Um, Derek Carr yesterday had a really good game, in my opinion, and I think the team really played for Derek Carr. I think last week, when the entire situation happened with Carr during his presser, it was very clear he was upset. And even after the game, we heard uh, all the guys kind of come together and they're all chanting the words DC. <laughs> that fired me up, man. It means guys are really playing for Derek Carr, at, at least a partly Derek Carr, right? I'm sure they're playing for Josh as well. Um, a lot of players have told me they absolutely love Josh McDaniel. So uh, I think the team is really finally coming together, right? I think it's kind of take a little bit longer and maybe that's ended our season, unfortunately, because it took just too long, right? 10 games into the season is too long. Three and seven, you're likely out of the playoffs. But I do like what this team did yesterday. Derek Carr had a really good game, in my opinion. Uh, he made all the correct reads. He did have a couple of off throws here or there. Uh, he got pressured a little bit. That kind of impacted some of his uh, throws. But generally speaking, he had a really good game. Um, Devontae Adams and him were on point, And it really started with like the third play of the game uh, where he hit Devontae Adams on an in-breaking route. And Devontae Adams was able to shake. It was a cover one. He was able to shake his uh, defender took that pass and picked up like 15, 20 yards, a really solid game, right? Um, even more so than that, the play in overtime where Derek Carr hit Devontae Adams was a really nice play. Let's break that down a little bit. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and break this play down. This is the touchdown, obviously, in overtime. The Broncos are in a cover three, which means all three of these cornerbacks basically split the deep third. The safety's going to drop here, and the Raiders are going to come right at Patrick Sertain. Now, do understand that Josh McDaniels drew this up specifically to attack Patrick Sertain. Now, what the Raiders are going to do is have Matt Collins run a drive route underneath, and Devontae Adams is going to come inside. And generally speaking, in the past, the Raiders would have Devontae Adams run this inside route. But they understand that Patrick Sertain is going to cheat, and he's going to look to undercut this throw and pick it off. And Devontae Adams is actually going to cut it to the outside. And Sertain gets caught looking to the inside. Now also note that on top of your screen, the receiver, Keelan Cole, is going to run a post route, which is going to get the eyes of the safety. Therefore, no one is there to help on the Devontae Adams. So if you guys watch this play as it begins, you're going to see Matt Collins run the drive concept, which is basically just a drag route. You're going to see Adams stem this to the inside. And Patrick Sertain is going to get his eyes into the backfield. You can see right there, he's looking in the backfield and Devontae Adams, instead of going downwards, is going to cut it back to the outside. The safety here has his back turned and he's going to take the post away. And Devontae Adams is able to cut it back and Derek Carr finds him for a touchdown. There's another part of this play that people may not think about, right? The Devontae Adams, Matt Collins fake as receivers is nice, but Derek Carr also does a great job with the fake. Derek Carr is going to set and he's going to set his body this way and most quarterbacks do this the way they're gonna throw they will angle their body that way and you can see Derek Carr is angled to the left here and basically he's gonna look to the left and because of Derek Carr doing that that also draws the coverage to the left and Derek Carr is going to come back and this is a difficult throw because his body's positioned to the left and he's gonna throw it to the right you can even see as Derek Carr throws it his body kind of twists awkwardly a little bit uh, and he throws it out of his natural motion, and that right there ends up hitting Devontae for a touchdown. This is a really good job. The design of this play right here, the fact that you get Devontae Adams to fake it to the inside, come back to the outside, Derek looks that way. This is a great job. Now, generally speaking, I felt like the offense line did really good. Um, technically, Derek Carr was sacked twice. One of those two sacks didn't count because of a penalty. 
We're going to break down both sacks in a second, uh, but just kind of talking about the O-line, gen- uh, O-line a little bit. Uh, 41 pass blocking snaps, right? Um, in those 41, officially they gave up one sack, but that sack they gave up was on Josh Jacobs. Uh, we'll break that down in a second here. Uh, plus, in those 41 snaps, they really only gave up two quarterback hits, right? One came on, uh, on Thayer Munford. The other one came kind of on the inside. I think a D-line game was missed by Bars. Um, but overall, you know, Jermaine Illuminor, Dylan Parham, I think had great games. Andre James, really, really good game. Uh, right guard still kind of struggled, although in the last two weeks, I think, or last three games, I think this was his best of the last three. Uh, Munford, I think, still kind of struggled. Um, I think for Munford, we need to let him develop more and see what he can bring next year. Um, maybe he'll be able to beat out Jermaine Illuminor for the right tackle position. Maybe he's not. I just think that he has certain issues that you may not be able to overlook, right? Let's just break down Josh Jacobs' sack that he gave up. Uh, plus, we'll look at a couple of Thayer Munford snaps, right? All right, you guys, jumping forward, um, the Raiders gave up two back-to-back sacks. Now, this is the second sack. The first sack was, we'll get into that play in a second. Uh, the first sack also had a penalty, and they accepted the penalty. So, do understand, uh, the Raiders right now have the ball at about the 37-yard line. They were at the 27-yard line. And although Derek Carr got sacked, uh, the penalty put them back to the 37. And then Derek Carr is going to get sacked, right? They're going to bring five guys. They're going to run a stunt. The Raiders have six guys, so they should have theoretically been able to pick it up. Um, But we'll kind of talk about exactly what's going to happen now. Do understand the pressure on this play comes from the linebacker that's actually going to stunt. Um, and if you guys look at who's responsible for who, it's very clear exactly what happens on this play. The Raiders offensive line is going to slide to the right. So what that means is that Dylan Parham, Andre James, Alex Bars, and Thayer Munford have to pick up the one technique here and the two defensive ends to the right of Thayer Munford there, plus this linebacker there. Jermaine Illuminor is in a one-on-one block here, and the running back is responsible for this linebacker here. So the running back should have picked up number 47, who's going to end up getting the sack. So as you guys are going to see, the play is going to begin. Uh, Jermaine Illuminor takes the outside guy. Dylan Parham's going to slide to his right. You guys can see that. He slides to his right. The slide is to the right because the O-line, the, the four guys from Parham to tackle Munford, have these four guys here. And watch 47 and watch what he does. He's going to come back around to the right. And Josh Jacobs does not follow that. And that's on Josh Jacobs. He has to follow that to the right instead he's going to take the linebacker here but understanding that that's not josh Jacobs' responsibility that would be the offensive lineman any of these four guys have to pick up these four guys and dylan parm's going to pick it up right parm is going to see the stunt here and he picks it up josh should have theoretically came back to the right um so this sack right here is on josh Jacobs. you lose nine yards on this play now uh, the play before is also the play that Andre James holds on. Um, it's also the play that Thayer Munford gives up the sack. You guys can see the hold uh, from the backside. Andre James is in a one-on-one situation, and he's going to get caught holding there. That is 100% a hold. You got to do a better job. Uh, generally speaking, it's okay to hold the shoulder pads, but when a guy gets away from you, you got to let the shoulder pad go, right? Uh, plus, when a guy kind of falls, it's pretty easy for the referee to call it. Um, and then Thayer Munford did a really bad job. He's not very quick out of his stance. Number 43 just hits the outside. And Munford has to be able to shut that down. Munford has to be able to not allow the guy to get the outside. That to a guy that's much smaller than him. And he's able to wrap up Derek. Now, some people on social media posted this and said, why can Derek not get out of an arm tackle? Um, that's just not Derek Carr's game, right? And you can't expect Derek to do something that may not be his game, right? Some other quarterbacks in the league, right? Josh Allen is big. He can probably get out of these type of things. Maybe Brady, or at the very least, maybe they sit, they kind of stand up and maybe throw the ball, maybe throw it away. Um, that's not Derek Carr's game. So you shouldn't really expect him to be able to do that. But just know, I did see some people talking about that. Um, Now, one of the things with this play is I think Munford, because there's a guy lined up in the 4-I, isn't very quick, isn't very snappy to get out. Um, But you got to get there. You got to get to your spot. You got to get vertical. And you can't give the guy the outside lane. Um, He's kind of catching this guy instead of punching him. Uh, Get your hands and slow him down. Punch him. All right. And if you guys watch the 
uh, outside the end here with the right hand his right hand is going to attack munford's outside hand right you see the attack bam right there um that basically is a bad strike by thayer munford uh, not a major deal but of course this was one of the sacks one of the two sacks obviously it didn't count because they took the penalty instead let's go ahead and get to the next one all right you guys jumping into this play right here this is first and seven with 32 seconds left in the fourth quarter uh the raiders could have ended the game here right it's 13 to 16 at this point the raiders gonna draw it up to foster moreau keep in mind this is a good play design i think Derek carr hits this for a touchdown because foster moreau has inside leverage on this safety he's bigger and he makes these type of plays but unfortunately the ball sills way too high and the reason why it sills high is because of their Munford. If you guys watch Munford, 53 gives him an inside hezzy, is able to get around and gets to the quarterback. Now, what does that mean exactly? Uh, teams have figured out the way to attack their Munford is to fake a inside move. Right, 53 fakes inside. You guys can see his body kind of move from the inside out. And that right there, if you watch Munford now, makes him slow down a little bit, right? Uh, a guy may potentially go to the inside. Munford leans because he thinks there might be a defensive line game coming where 93 comes out, 53 comes underneath. Either way, that right there makes Munford hesitate, and then you attack Munford on the outside. And by him attacking Munford on the outside, that lets him get to the quarterback. That's not acceptable because those are losing plays. Imagine if this ball gets popped into the air and they pick it off, right? The Raiders lose this game. Um, this is why I don't think their Munford is ready yet, right? It's because of plays like this. And the third play is this play. And once again, Derek Carr is going to get hit. Um, he's forced to step up on this play because uh, you're going to see the right tackle is going to get beat to the outside. Derek Carr feels it as a quarterback. He steps up. And you see the pocket kind of collapses up front. You know, sometimes Derek Carr had a good pocket in terms of up front. Sometimes he really didn't. Um, Josh does have to do a better job stopping 49. Because if he stops 49, right, if he's able to anchor down there. Uh, Illuminor has his guy go upfield. This is stopped here. Uh, Parham kind of loses to 93 there. I think that's Dermont Jones. Um, Derek may be able to come this way, right? He may be able to avoid it. Um, but he just wasn't able to, and the ball falls incomplete. Again, not a major deal with Mumford. He'll get better. He'll grow. You know, he'll develop. Um, Josh Jacobs had a good game. 4.5 yards per attempt. You can put that on the O-line in terms of run blocking. Um, not a lot of losing reps, right, from the offensive line in run blocking. There were a couple plays where it was like one or two yard gains. Uh, but not a lot, right? A lot of Josh's runs were a little bit, you know, like three, four, five, six yard runs. Uh, Jacobs had a really good game again. Uh, Josh Jacobs has, let's be honest, been one of the best Raiders this, this season. Um, you know, it's crazy because Josh Jacobs may not be with the Raiders next year. And I don't know if Zamir White's the guy or if you draft the running back in the second round next year, right? All the great running backs come in the second round, in my opinion. Um, and I think the Raiders may do that next year, right? Um, Josh just may be too expensive, right? $12, $13 million for a running back when you already have $75 million invested in four guys on the offensive side. Maybe just a little bit too much, right? Um, so we'll see what ends up happening next year. But Josh Jacobs has really been doing a good job. Now, there was one play I want to talk about specifically. It was third and five, all right? And on that play, uh, the Raiders ran it. Now, do understand the yards and situations and those kind of things. Um, it was from the 33-yard line. So the Raiders had a field goal regardless. And we ran the ball. And I think the hopes was that we can run the ball and pick up one or two yards and then go for it on fourth and short. But because the Raiders picked up no yards, they ended up just kicking the field goal. And I know some people question Josh McDaniels and why he would do this specifically. But one of the things you guys got to realize is NFL teams have breakdowns of every single situation right they have breakdowns of when it's third and five what a team does when it's third and eight what a team does right and for the raiders if it's third and five and let's say you throw the football a hundred percent of the time right let's say you've been in that situation a hundred times over the first 10 weeks in a third and five situation it might not be a hundred right uh, 25 times you've been in a third and five and you passed it a hundred percent of the time teams are going to know those tendencies so teams are not going to defend the run. They're going to creep a little bit more towards the pass. And for the Raiders, they went ahead and said, we're going to run it. Third and five, we're going to run the football. And they ran it. And obviously, it didn't work. Oh, let's just break the play down a little bit, and we'll come back and talk about it. Alrighty, guys. Third and five right here. Um, This is the play that some people really did not 
people were confused. What the hell are the Raiders doing running it on third and five? Uh, but as we mentioned, you know, you have to run these plays. Um, this is an inside zone to the left here. Uh, the guy that messes up is going to be Foster Moreau. Foster Moreau is going to get crushed right here by this uh, defensive end. You know, as a inside zone run happens, it's okay for Foster Moreau not to do anything, right? As in, like, just kind of stand there and block your guy to the outside. But the thing you can't have happen is you can't have your guy push you back. And that's exactly what happens in this play. If you guys watch it in slow motion, Foster Moreau has to make contact with his guy and stop his guy right there. But Foster Moreau is going to get pushed back, right? You see Foster Moreau losing depth. And ultimately, because of that, the fullback's going to have to take Foster Moreau's guy. The fullback should have taken the guy up here. And because the fullback had to take Foster Moreau's guy, that guy goes unblocked. And he's the guy that's going to initially make contact with Josh. Josh does break it, but everyone else kind of rallies there. Uh, do note, this is an inside zone to the left. And we don't run a lot of inside zones this year. But I do like the fact that the Raiders do continue to mix it up. Um, I think a lot of these guys are good inside zone players. You look at Dylan Parham. He's going to reach here on the four eye. That's a good reach right there. Really nice shot by Parham to get to the outside of this guy. Again, if Foster Moreau had his guy out here, this play hits. This play would have been probably a first down, if not even more yards. Because even Andre James is a good enough job here. Illuminor here. Uh, the backside is a pretty good job. But the one guy that messed up on this play, of course, as you guys know, really just ruined this entire play, and that's Foster Moreau. So I didn't want to just break that down. Uh, could the Raiders have done something better? Possibly, right? Possibly we could have, but it is what it is. So again, not a massive deal in my opinion. I know it does kind of suck, but uh, it is what it is. Let's, let's go ahead and shift focus a little bit. You know, I think the offense had a really good day, 22 points. Um, not a massive game, but it was a very productive game. And I think those long drives, churning out yards really helped the entire team, right? Because the defense wasn't out there a whole lot. Um, and you can even give credit to the defense for forcing a lot of three, three and outs or just one first down and then forcing the out, right? Uh, specifically in the second half. In the first half, the defense looked, you know, kind of bad. But in the second half, the defense stepped up. Uh, Max Crosby was basically unblockable, as was Denzel Perryman. Um, and even Trayvon Merrick, I know uh, a lot of people have been talking about Trayvon Merrick. We'll watch some plays, right? We'll really get into it. We'll break down Max, we'll break down Perryman, and we'll break down Merrick. And I think those three guys, specifically the first two, Crosby and Perryman, had great games. Merrick wasn't all that bad. Let's, let's just get right into the tape. Watch Denzel Perryman read and fill his gap. In my opinion, Perryman was straight stout against the run, man. Look at that play right there. Great job reading, being quick, exploding, not getting picked off. You know, you get the double team here. One of these guys has to pick up Perryman. And since Perryman goes to be outside at 97, that would be this guy here. And you can see the guy just isn't quick enough to get to Perryman. Even right now, if this guy turns and is able to just block Perryman outwards, the lane would develop here. But Perryman absolutely does not let that happen. He fires through there and he quickly explodes and is able to wrap up the running back. Denzel Perryman looked really, really good yesterday. All right, you guys, check this next play out right here. Third and 12, you're going to get a cover six by the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Trayvon Merrick's playing deep, and he's going to take away the deep route. Do understand that Max Crosby is actually going to get some pressure. So because Max gets pressure, Russell Wilson is forced to get out of the pocket. But Merrick still does a good job taking away the top defender. Now, again, this is what Trayvon Merrick is going to be asked to do. All right, in a cover six specifically, he has to play the deep, and he takes the deep pass away. So I do want to just point that out. There's a couple other plays where we'll kind of point it out, very similar where Merrick takes uh, the guy over the top. Now, do note, this was the play that Max Crosby got the penalty. So although he did a good job in terms of forcing Wilson out of the pocket, uh, you got to do a better job. You don't need to make the contact right there. I know it's such a bang-bang play. It's very difficult. It is what it is. Merrick did a good job. Let's get into the next rep. Now, I do want you guys to keep this in mind right here. Uh, same drive. Melvin Gordon's going to get the ball on an inside run. Watch Max Crosby, man. He takes on the right tackle, gets off the right tackle, sees Melvin Gordon and throws a right punch, and bam, there comes out the football. Fantastic job right there. Absolutely love that play. It's a really nice job. Check out this play. Watch Denzel Perryman absolutely blow this play up. He jumps the gap, he gets onto Latavius Murray, and he brings him down for a four-yard loss. 
Big, big shout out to number 91. Now, this is an inside zone to the right, which means the right tackle has to get to the inside of number 91. And then the right guard gets off of 91 and picks up Denzel Perryman. If you guys watch number 91, Nichols, he's going to do a good job holding his block. All right? You see that right hand land to the uh, to the left of the right guard here? That right there is going to allow him to hold off that guy and not let him get up to Perryman. That's a really nice job by Belial Nichols, right? Just want to point that out. Sometimes when the guys up front are able to hold off and not allow the reach, sometimes it allows your linebackers to just play freely and just run out there and make plays. It's a great job by Nichols and Denzel Perryman. All right, you guys, check this final play out. The Raiders are in a cover one rat with Trayvon Merrick being the rat defender. The Broncos are going to run a concept up top where they're going to get their receiver here to come on a quick slant route. And they're trying to pick up the six yards they need for the first down. And you're going to see Merrick playing right underneath that. And he's basically taking this away. And Russell Wilson's looking right at Trayvon Merrick. And he understands this is not going to work. At the same time, Max Crosby bursts through there, gets after Russell Wilson, and he ends up sacking him. That's a really nice job right there. If you guys watch it from the other angle, you can see Russell Wilson's eyes as he sets. He's looking, and he's going to see it right away, that Trayvon Merrick standing right there. At the same time, Crosby kills that right tackle. That's a nice move right there. Look at that spin move. Bam. Really, really nice shot by Crosby. Coming up big when needed. Absolutely love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to add some film content. Um, I thought about doing a full film breakdown only, but then I realized that I also kind of want to talk, right? And not just be in a situation where you guys can't actually see me. Uh, and actually, you know, I can't actually present it in a way where I may want to because with the film, it's kind of limited. Um, plus, it makes it a little bit harder. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please understand it took a long time to put this video together. So a thumbs up is very appreciated um you know the raiders are three and seven um we have seven games left we could technically finish ten and seven if we win all our games um or nine and eight or even eight and nine and regardless of where the raiders finish i think the more games you win this year the more likely you are to have success next year because then the offensive line buys in then Derek carr buys in then Devontae Adams buys in, right? They all buy into Josh McDaniel's offense, and then the defense buys into Patrick Graham's defense. And on top of that, Jesse Bates may be looking to go to a playoff team, and he may say, well, the Raiders finished 8-9, and nine, and I could help them win a couple games. And a guy like Aaron Donald or Jeffrey Simmons or whoever it is, right? I know it's not going to be those two guys, but whoever it is out there that may become a free agent that may be looking to go to a team, you know, you'd rather go to an eight and nine team, a nine and eight team, a 10 and seven team, than a three and 15 or three and 14 team, right? You don't want to go to the shittiest team. You'd rather go to a team that's right there, a team that really just needs one or two things for it to really click. Uh, plus, the Raiders could still, even at like six, seven wins, have a top 12 pick. Imagine getting the best wide receiver or the best um, linebacker, the best safety out of the draft. And he actually hits, right? Whoever this guy may be, he becomes the top five player at his position. That puts the Raiders forward, right? So there's so much the Raiders can do. And I think this game against the Broncos really showed why I think the Raiders have a massive potential, massive upside with the guys that are currently there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.